Today we're going to discuss deepening self-awareness. In the past seven months, we've covered a lot of topics in self-awareness one-on-one. We've talked about belief systems. We've talked about active listening skills. We've talked about dealing with external resistance to change, establishing boundaries. Most of the things that we've talked about have been human behavior and personal development skills and strategies. And feedback that I have gotten often is questioning Are you going to get into deeper levels of self-awareness, understanding the nature of things? And the reason we call the course Self-Awareness 101 is that this is introductory for a lot of people. I know that when I first started my journey, if people would have given me some of those deeper meanings, I... It's kind of like giving collegiate level information to a kindergarten level student. But I believe that if you have been with us this far into the journey, even if you're joining us at this point in the journey, I believe you're here for a reason. And that's that you're on a journey of both personal and spiritual development. Spirituality is a word that can mean many things to many people. So let me put out that the definition I'm going to be using for this episode is your interconnectedness, your interrelationship with everything, with other people, with the planet, with the universe. Now, for me, when I was younger, spirituality was tied to religion. I was brought up in a very specific religion that taught me very specific rules that I needed to follow, or I would be condemned to eternal suffering. For those of you who have been following my journey in the Self-Awareness 101 series, you'll know that there were experiences that took me very far away from what my religious upbringing was to the point where I actually had used the term in a conversation with with someone one time that God and I had a hate-hate relationship. I was sure because of the life I was living that God hated me and I was hating him right back. And because there was a point that came in my life where I was trying to get sober and I was using a 12-step program to achieve that outcome, I was told that one of the things I needed to do was to turn my will and my life over to a power greater than myself. Instantly, my definition of that was that I was going to have to go back to my childhood religion. And I had done so much by that point that was out of line with my religion that that just wasn't going to happen. I mean, I actually told the person, if that's my only option of staying sober, I have no hope of staying sober. And this gentle biker who uh, was also into his own recovery said to me, Will, you don't have to believe in the God of your youth find something that makes sense to you. I mean, do you at least believe that there's something out there beyond you? You didn't create all these things. And I had to say, I'm smart enough to realize that I didn't form the earth and all these other things. And he said, is there anything in your religion that did make sense to you? And there were bits and pieces that did. And he asked me, take a look at what makes sense to you and what doesn't. And the things that don't make sense to you, question them. Look at other possibilities. And I had to look at a part of my life that I was always very proud of. And that is that in my bloodline, there is Native American blood. And when I was growing up, I was always fascinated by the way that Native American Indians understood the circle of life. You know, they would not take life, whether that was an animal or a tree or a plant, without making it a blessed and sacred experience. They would literally pray to their gods to bless that animal or that tree or that vegetable before they took it. And then they would make sure to use every part of it so that they honored the fact that this other life force 
And again, plants have life force just like animals do. This other source of energy was contributing to their well-being. They would honor that. And I always was fascinated by the peace that came from that. So when Bill suggested to me to start looking at what resonated with me, I looked at Native American approaches to life. And I looked at science. You know, I recognized this alignment between the Native American belief that everything was connected and science telling me that if you break everything down to its simplest form, it's simply energy. Then I started looking at the religion I grew up in, and there was an alignment in the belief there. It was saying that all these things in the universe came from one source. Again, everything connected Native American, energy, science, my religion saying that everything came from this infinite source. And I decided that I would start looking at all different approaches to belief systems about who we are, what connects us. So I would look at scientific approaches, whether it was Newtonian physics, quantum physics, metaphysics. I would look at Native Americanism. I would look at any religion that I could study things about. And I started looking for the common threads. Through that, I was able to develop a definition of spirituality that served me in helping me become who I am today. Now, I will also say that questioning these things can be a very scary process. Because when I was little, I was told that if you even questioned God, you ran the risk of making him very angry. And making God angry was a very bad thing. Eternity, suffering, just for asking questions. So I understand that for some of you, even exploring other possibilities than the belief systems that you grew up with may be a very scary thing and you may not be willing to do it. And that's okay. That's your choice. I know for me, I needed to find things that I could have certainty in rather than just believing because somebody told me that I had to believe these things. So what I want to offer to you is that if you are on this journey of personal and spiritual development, because my belief is they are interconnected, you're, you're not going to separate them. You may try, but in time you'll find that they are connected. You are going to have to question some of those things that just don't make sense to you. And it's okay to do that. I don't know if my telling you that makes a difference, but it is truly okay to question those things. I know that through doing all the exploration I've done over the past 20 years, there are things within the religion that I grew up in that make sense to me now that never did before. So what I invite you to do this week is to take some quiet time, really think about this and ask yourself, what are some of the core beliefs that I have that I was given by other people that I hold on to, but they don't make sense to me and they don't serve me. And ask yourself, are you willing to start exploring these belief systems and looking for other possibilities? It's a very freeing experience. It may give you more certainty in that belief, or it may have you look at alternatives. Again, we can't get into the depth that I'd like to go in this series. This is 101, but we will be addressing more things like this on the website. I thank you for your interest. I thank you for the questions. I look forward to your feedback. I look forward to connecting soon. Take care. For a transcription of the video you just watched, more videos, and related articles, visit yourdailylifecoach.com. To comment on this video, select Discussion Forums on any page of our website.